Hello friends. I'm so excited today to share my absolute favorite uh, garden story, how Groundhog's Garden grew. And you know what's so fun is we have a little groundhog out in our storybook garden. That little rascal ate quite a few of our plants, but we have so many of these animals that live in this story out in our garden, and it's so much fun to share our storybook garden with them in our garden habitat. So let's find out how Groundhog's Garden grew. I love the inside of this book because it shows different types of seeds germinating. Remember germination is when the little baby plant inside the seed cracks out and starts to grow. So here we see zucchini, pea, tomato, bean, lettuce, Brussels sprouts, potato, pepper, chard, radish, pumpkin, and sunflower. Just a few of the amazing crops we can grow in our garden. This book is How Groundhog's Garden Grew by Lynn Cherry. Little Groundhog was hungry, beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible, he exclaimed as he crept into a neighbor's lovely vegetable garden. He was nibbling on some fresh green lettuce when Squirrel rushed down from her tree. <laughs> Little Groundhog! Squirrel scolded. This food does not belong to you. If you t take food that belongs to others, you will not have a friend in the world. Why don't you plant your own garden? I'm sorry, little groundhog told her, embarrassed, but I don't know how. Well then, replied Squirrel, I will show you. What a good friend to show him how to make a garden. First, you will need seeds, said Squirrel. Little Groundhog helped Squirrel and her friends pick beans and peas from pods and seeds from a sunflower's drooping head. They collected seeds from inside peppers and cantaloupes, cucumbers and tomatoes. Squirrel chewed a hole into a pumpkin and handed Little Groundhog the gooey seed, saying, we'll dry these in the sun, then we can plant them in the spring. That's what we do in the fall. We collect the seeds for next spring. A chill breeze blew in. It's time to dig up potatoes, Squirrel said. Little Groundhog watched Squirrel and thought, that looks like fun. And so he took a rake and poked around for potatoes too. When they were finished, Squirrel added composted leaves to her garden as fertilizer for the coming year. And we can see all of these amazing plants all around the edge of our garden book. Squirrel put aside a few potatoes and the tops of some onions in a burlap sack. She put the seeds they had collected in tins to keep them cool, dark, and dry, and put the tins in her sack. That will keep the little baby plant inside the seeds sleeping all winter long. We call that dormant. November snow flurries told Squirrel that winter was on its way. Sweet dreams, little groundhog, Squirrel said as she curled up in her tree hole. She's got a cozy dray up in that cavity nest. See you in the spring, little groundhog said, snuggling into his deep earthen burrow. As winter snows blew, little groundhog and Squirrel slept. They're hibernating this winter. In February, little groundhog awoke and drowsily ambled up to the burrow entrance. The wind made him shiver, and he saw his shadow and hurried back inside. He woke up for Groundhog's Day on February 2nd. Oh my, he said, this will be a long winter. <laughs> Weeks later, he awoke with a start. It's spring, he shouted, and up he scuttled to the burrow entrance. There he met Squirrel carrying his burlap sack as they filled it with potatoes 
and the tins of seeds. Rise and shine, Squirrel said. It's planting time. Look, the potatoes are sprouting. First, we will cut them into little pieces with two sprouts each. See these little sprouts? Those are what we call the eyes of the potatoes. But the potatoes don't see through their eyes. Instead, that's where new potato plants will grow. Then we'll plant them with their sprouts pointing up and cover them with soil. Each sprout will grow into new potato plant. Next fall, we'll dig new potatoes out of the ground. Now, let's find a sunny place for your garden. We need a spot that gets six to eight hours of sunlight most days. When they found a good spot, Squirrel told Little Groundhog, first we need to dig in the soil to loosen it up. Next, they planted the cut up potatoes. Then they dug rows and planted in carrots, beets, parsnips, and radish seeds. All these vegetables will grow under the ground, Squirrel told him. So we call them root crops because we eat the root of the plant. We can also eat some of the greens too. They covered the seeds with dirt and gently watered them. At the end of each row, Squirrel stuck in markers to help them remember what they had planted. And that's a good idea because they're planting so many seeds. Sometimes it's hard to remember what was planted where. Look at, we've got Toad out in the garden helping too. Squirrel told Little Groundhog, plants need lots of sun. We'll plant taller vegetables in the back so they won't cast a shadow over the shorter ones. So behind the row of root crops, they planted seeds of tomatoes, peppers, and leafy greens. Some vegetables grow on vines, said Squirrel. So she pounded sticks in the ground for the pea and bean plants to climb. Some plants grow very big, said Squirrel. They planted the seeds of pumpkin, zucchini, yellow squash, sunflowers, corn, and artichokes far apart to give them lots of room to grow. Most of those are our sisters that we've been learning about. Look at all the amazing food that they will harvest later in the season all of them growing from these tiny seeds that have a baby plant sleeping inside of them. The next day, Squirrel said, let's visit my garden. I want to show you the plants that come up year after year all by themselves. They're called perennials. Sure enough, shoots of raspberries and asparagus were already poking up through the ground. Squirrel dug up a frilly young asparagus plant for little groundhog's garden. She told him, you need to wait three years before this asparagus has nice thick stems to eat. Little groundhog said, thank you, I'm off to plant my perennials. What a nice gift. Gardening makes it fun to share our garden and share the abundance of Mother Earth. Every day, little groundhog watched and waited and watered his garden. Then one day, tiny seedlings emerged. What a wonder, he exclaimed. But as they grew, he worried. Are these seedlings too crowded together? What should I do, he asked Squirrel. Pull some up and plant them somewhere else, she said. We call that transplanting. Little groundhog pulled up a few seedlings. She thinned them out and looked at them. The be peas, the beans, and all the seeds had split open. Remember, that's called germination. From each, a root grew down, 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 and a shoot grew up, up, up toward the sun. Little groundhog transplanted some seedlings where they had more room to grow. And look at all the baby plants growing in little groundhog's garden. What a wonder. 
Wren and Praying Mantis said to Little Groundhog, If you promise not to harm us with bug spray, we birds and insects will help you with your garden. We'll eat the harmful insects, what we call pests, that harm your plants, Little Groundhog promised. We call that organic gardening, where we don't use harmful chemicals that could hurt the birds and the bees and the insects and people too. As the weeks passed, plants grew and blossomed. Bees, flies, and butterflies came to eat the sweet nectar and carried pollen from flower to flower. They told little groundhog the wind, the rain, and we insects and birds pollinate your flowers so they can become fruits and vegetables. Look at them all working together to help little groundhog's garden grow and protect it from animal predators that would cause harm like aphids. Our ladybugs here love to eat aphids. Little groundhog noticed that after a flower was pollinated by an insect or a bird or the wind, its petals dried up and fell off. Underneath was the smallest beginning of a tiny vegetable or fruit. A tiny tomato, a tiny cucumber, a pepper, an eggplant, a pea pot, a zucchini. So this is how a garden grows, little groundhog cried jubilantly. Look it! We have yellow squash, and we have snow peas, we have tomatoes, and zucchini, and eggplants, and peppers. What a wonder, what a joy to harvest these beautiful fruits. Tomatoes turned red, heads of cabbage grew, a sunflower seemed to explode from the top of a tall stalk. Snap peas, string beans, peppers, lettuce, and chard grew larger under the warm sun. Little groundhog rejoiced. He ate his very own fruits and vegetables, plain and fresh, from his very own garden all summer long. A cornucopia of delight. When fall came again, Squirrel wanted to share one more secret with Little Groundhog cooking. And so they stewed tomatoes, boiled corn, broiled potatoes, stir-fried veggies, and even stuffed and baked a zucchini after saving the seeds to plant next year. There was so much more than they could eat themselves. What do we do? asked Little Groundhog. We share. And what a good idea. Gardens allow us to build a strong, healthy community, sharing with our friends, families, and neighbors. Look at all these beautiful foods that we can grow and harvest. What a great idea, cried Little Groundhog. As they sat around the table, their friends exclaimed, Thank you for inviting us to this amazing feast. Little Groundhog replied, Thank you for forgiving me for eating from your garden all last year. And thank you, Squirrel, for teaching me to grow my own. It's beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible. Let's eat. What a fortunate creature I am, he thought. Delicious, nutritious, homegrown food and wonderful friends to share it with. Little Groundhog grew into Big Groundhog and became known far and wide for his annual Thanksgiving dinner. And that is how Groundhog's garden grew. Look at all the wonderful foods they prepared with the fruits and vegetables they grew. And here we have possum, garter snake, we've got a swallowtail butterfly, little mole buddy, we've got raccoons and turtles and mice, the bluebird of happiness, little chipmunk and a skunk buddy, and of course our friend squirrel and toad, frog, plus all the birds and insects and spiders that helped in the garden all summer long. 
This is the gift of growing a garden, sharing the wonderful abundance with our friends and neighbors, just like we do here in our storybook garden. Thank you for sharing this wonderful story. And don't forget, it all starts with a seed. And we can have our seeds because of the help of our pollinator pals. So when you enjoy all these wonderful fruits and vegetables that are a rainbow of good health, thank our pollinator pals for helping to make the seeds so we can always grow more food.